in my attempt to find out more about Emmett Ashford, to research not just about an historical figure or an icon in the world of professional baseball, I wanted to find out more about the man. So I was fortunate enough to meet a man who knew him, who knew him as an umpire and who knew him as a citizen of Los Angeles. I was fortunate enough to speak with Mr. Brad Pod. I guess the seeing him work in high school, he was the only one, you know, and it was it was progress as far as we were concerned. Uh, and then you kept, you see him uh, uh, doing some UCLA games, uh, basketball games, and uh, I don't think he ever worked any football games, but he worked uh, basketball in all levels, you know, and that's what I remember about Emmett, and I remember him when I was in high school. And, you know, you look around and you don't see nobody else look like him. And, um, and he opened the way for uh, blacks in the Pacific Coast League. No, I, I, I just think he believed that he could be a major league umpire. He believed he had the, t you know, when you supervise umpires and they go up, you got to believe that they put you in that position. Uh, he was umpiring in chief, I don't know, almost a decade before he got a chance to, you know, to, and, and then he was such a ambassador for Major League Baseball once he got in. Uh, Commissioner Bowie Kuhn put him on his staff after he retired, you know, and so, here a guy would make a contribution to baseball. Then I took Emmett to the World Series. I asked Red Patterson, who was the public relations director of the Dodgers at the time, if he would give Emmett a pass. We wanted him to do a story for the Sentinel. So he got World Series credentials. So. We were coming off the field, and the umpires were sitting there on a bench. And I said, uh, this is Emmett Ashes. Could we get a picture with you? I don't want to take no picture with him. So Emmett went in the dugout crying. What year was that, sir? It was the year that Sweet Lou Johnson was in the World Series with the Dodgers. And it was, must have been 65, I think. And, and as I indicated earlier, guys that Emmett supervised were going to the majors, but they just kept bypassing him. And also there was a white umpire who they, I can't think of his name now, but they said he was colorful, you know, and he w was a duplicate of Emmett Ashford, you know. Now, Emmett had tremendous experience. He worked uh, college basketball, he worked high school basketball, he worked uh, high school football, and I, I, he probably worked junior college, I, I'm not sure about that, but uh, he had tremendous experience, and you know, but he was colorful. But, he really wanted to be a major league umpire. And everything he did, all of these experiences he had, all of the objections he faced, he just kept pushing. And uh, I don't know, he had to be the Jackie Robinson of umpires. He took the kind of punishment that Jackie had to endure and couldn't fight back, you know, but he still hung in there and believed that, you know, it was possible in America for him to be an umpire.